Welcome to Java 101. Expectations, none. This requires no previous coding experience. We're gonna go really slow. Windows or Mac OS is fine. We're gonna use Java 23, but nothing in this course goes past Java 8. We're gonna use IntelliJ for our integrated development environment. If you don't know what that is, this is where we write our code and run it. And it handles a bunch of stuff for us like the JDK and JRE. You don't have to know what this is yet. Here are all the things we're gonna cover in this course. Feel free to pause the video. And here's the end game. So Java 101 is followed by Java 102. At that point, you can go in a bunch of different directions. One is data structures and algorithms in Java. But I personally recommend you do something useful with Java, like backend web development, where you actually build an application. In that case, you would learn Spring Boot, and I do have a course for this. That's what the green check mark means. Or you can do automation testing and web crawlers using Selenium and Cucumber. This is also an area of interest. There's a lot of jobs out there in this field. I have a course on this as well. So make sure once you learn Java, you actually learn what to do with it. What separates this course from everyone else is that there are mandatory practice exercises. Every video will have homework to complete with answers. It'll be in the description. You learn programming by doing, not by listening to me yap. And lastly, this is optional. I do have a Patreon with a private Discord server. Learning online by yourself sucks. We have a whole community with live help from me and other students. And for context, Udemy courses can run 20 to 50 bucks and they have no live help, no community. This is better and cheaper. And with that, let's get started. Go to the IntelliJ website. The link is in the description. Do not click IntelliJ IDEA Ultimate. This one costs money. Scroll down to IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition. Select your version, download, and install. Once you've installed it, you should see this page. I do have a couple projects already. You can ignore these. Click this button for new project. I'm gonna name it Java 101. My location is in Documents folder, that's fine. Do not check this button. Our build system will be IntelliJ for now. For the JDK, notice it says Dash 23, that's Java version 23. This is fine. You're welcome to use another version if you want to, but for this course, we're doing the latest one. Make sure to check this box, Add Sample Code, and uncheck this box, Generate Code with Onboarding Tips. And this is our advanced settings if you need to see them. When you're done, click the blue Create button. So here is our newly created Java project. If you look in the top corner, you'll notice Java 101. This is the folder that was created when we created our project. And if you open your documents, you'll see the exact same folder here. Next up, find the SRC folder. This is short for source and find the file that says main. Double click it to open it. This is our main class in Java. It was automatically generated for us. If you go up into the top right hand corner, you'll see a green triangle that says run main.java. Go ahead and click it and you can see this pop up at the bottom that says hello world. This came from this text up here that says hello world. If I delete any part of the text, like the exclamation mark, and re-click the Run button, you can see that the text output changed. Okay, so what happened? We have a class named main. Think of this as a file in Microsoft Word named, for example, My Resume. A class is not exactly a file, but this is a good start. Java files end in .java, just like Microsoft Word files end in .x. And these two things are connected. So main.java, the word main, has to match up exactly with main that comes right after class. Then we have the main method. You can see it highlighted in blue. So Java runs around looking for the keyword main to determine where to start running code. So it looked through our whole project, it found the keyword main, and it said, this is where I'm gonna start running my program. This is the code that actually ran. So system.out.println puts the text hello world in the console. 
The console is just a program's text output. We saw that at the bottom. So what is the console? This is where a program's output goes. Printing to the console means displaying text. It does not mean it actually prints ink to a LaserJet printer. For now, our simple programs, we're only going to print to the console. There's not going to be any buttons. There's no UI. There's nothing visual. And this should make sense because the Java code that we're eventually going to write is going to be used on the back end. This is code that's running on a server. So does a server have a screen? Not really. The console is like opening the hood of a car. You can see all of the parts running. You're a programmer now. You're like an auto mechanic. You're not a user. You're not a driver. You don't need a big fancy UI button like a steering wheel. You need to see the code actually running. That's what the console is. And lastly, there are a bunch of keywords we didn't cover. So public, static, void, string in these square brackets, args. We are not ready to talk about these yet. Java kind of sucks in that way where you have to learn everything before you can learn anything. We will come back and cover each one of these keywords in the future. OK, back to our program. I'm going to put my cursor in front of the capital S in system, and then I'm going to hit the Enter button. This looks a little better. And if I rerun the program, you'll notice I get the exact same output. So there's no carriage return here. In fact, I can put a bunch of carriage returns, and it still gives me the same output. I can add a bunch of spaces. Same output. I can put carriage returns and spaces all over the place. And Java doesn't care. I still get the exact same output. This is because Java doesn't care about white space. White space is for humans to read. You should use white space appropriately so that another developer can come along and read your code, but when Java runs, it ignores it. Next up, Java is a semicolon language. So you notice at the end of line three, we have a semicolon. If I delete the semicolon, you'll notice a little red squiggle. And if I hover, it says, semicolon expected. And then if I try to run it, it'll say, you can't run this. I'm expecting a semicolon. And if you look here, it even tells you what line it's expecting it on, line three. And if I double click it, notice it puts my cursor right on the line where it's expecting it. So make sure to add your semicolon. Next up, Java is a curly brace language. So if we look at our main method, it starts with an open curly brace and ends with a closed curly brace. All of our code that needs to live in the main method must be between these two curly braces. You see the same thing with our main class. The main class starts with an open curly brace and ends with a closed curling brace. So if I write code here, this lives inside of our main class but it does not live inside the main method. If I put code here, it also lives inside the main class and also does not live inside the main method. It can be before or after. And if I put code here, it does live inside the main method and also lives inside the main class. So to be more accurate, a line of Java code generally ends with an open curly brace, a closed curly brace, or a semicolon. OK, let's learn how to write a Java comment. A comment is something that Java skips over. It doesn't run this code. This is for humans only to read. This can help you or your coworker in the future. So it doesn't matter if the syntax is wrong inside of a comment. It just skips it over. So to write a comment, I'm going to put my cursor right after the open squirrely brace for the main method. And I'm going to hit Enter. Then you're going to do forward slash, forward slash. You can then type anything you want. Notice IntelliJ grays this out. This is a key that tells you that this is a comment. You can also do a multi-line comment. So forward slash, star, star again, then forward slash again. Then if I put my cursor in between the two stars and hit Enter, Anything in between these characters is now a comment. So this is a multi-line comment. This is good for longer messages or documentation. 
And another interesting thing you can do, you can comment out a line of code. So I have a perfectly valid line of code, but if I put slash slash in front of it, it grays it out, and Java will not run the line of code, even though the syntax is correct. This is good for debugging, where you don't want to delete the line of code yet. OK, and this is the last part of our Java basic syntax. Let's go ahead and do some print line statements. There are two ways. You can either do a print line or a print. So if you notice, we have system.out.println. This prints on a new line. So if I go after the semicolon, hit Enter, and then type system with a capital S, dot, like a period, out, dot again, print ln, ln stands for line, open parentheses, and if you notice, IntelliJ automatically generated the closing parentheses that is necessary. We then do double quotes, and you notice IntelliJ did the exact same thing. It also gave us our closing double quotes. Now we can write anything we want. I'm then going to move the cursor all the way to the end to make sure we put in our semicolon. When we run this, notice it printed out each thing on its own line. That's because it was print line. If I change this to just say print, I'm going to delete the ln on both of them. and now puts it on the exact same line. Notice it did not give us any white space or any space. So to do this, we would have to add an extra space. I could do that here. I could do that here. Or I could just have another print line statement. So if I put my cursor here, hit Enter, system with a capital S, dot out, dot print, and just print a space. Don't forget your semicolon at the end. You now get the exact same thing. OK, that's it for this video. Go ahead and do the exercises, see the description, answer the multiple choice questions, and also, I give shortcut keys in IntelliJ. You need to start memorizing these now. Good luck.